What's good, I'm Ross. Welcome to My Wellness Dojo. As part of my knee series, we're gonna look at how to fix knee pain fast with foam rolling. So we're always gonna start from the ground up when it comes to injuries, especially when it comes to low body injuries because of the amount, the cumulative amount of how you're walking. So from the ground up, how much lower can we go than the actual bottom of your foot or where we actually place our foot down where people get plantar fasciitis, right? This is also gonna help us stuff like that. So what you first want to do is get something that you can foam roll your foot with. You can use a dog towel, you can get creative, you can get a foam roller, although I suggest a rumble roller with these ridges, or you can use a lacrosse ball, you can buy all types of massage therapy things online. Um, I'm going to recommend some here in my links. But the fact is a golf ball, like I said, a dog toy, an avocado, anything might work. So what I think for your feet is good to do, get on a seat that's going to be Get your knees to about 90 degrees, maybe even a little higher, and just go ahead and put your foot on your rumble roller. So just like foam roller, we're gonna see as we get to the more details of different body parts, all you have to do is rock back and forth or apply pressure in some manner. You can rock back and forth. Feel free to apply different angles to it. You're gonna get you know, more of your instep if you put this angle in here, the outer part of your foot if you do here. If you find a good spot, you can park your weight on it. But really all you have to do is here, and it feels really good, you know, almost just put a little weight through your knees. Turning a little bit. Boom. So everything is connected to your knees. So we're going to keep moving up the, the chain of your muscles. Let's go to the calves. So I think the best way to, to foam roll these calves is to go ahead and start at the bottom. You're going to go from the ankle to the knee. I'm gonna take my other leg and apply a little pressure, keep this foot loose, and I'm gonna iron the muscle out. So I can either scoot a little bit like this, I can use my weight to go through the whole length of the muscle, which depends on what, how you feel. You can also rock left and right. So the thing is, it's cylindrical, so you're gonna to have to find some angles here. But the key is you're massaging the muscle, you find a good spot, you might park on it and wait, and really, ease that muscle. I can even feel a tingling in my foot. So if you feel that radiating sensation going, usually it's down from where you're rolling, you're probably in a good spot, but of course you're going to do this pain free. So next, we're going to go ahead, just go right behind the knee a little bit, get the insertion points of where the calf is, and you can do this a couple different ways. You can just you know, either scoot a little bit here or actually move your butt along the ground. I like both. I like to kind of get right where the calf gets, touches the knee and do a little behind the knee. Again, I'm going to take an angle here or there. Move up to the hamstring. Just go ahead and roll right there now where the hamstring kind of touches the knee. I can, I can, you know, prop myself up, apply my weight. But again, it's cylindrical, so I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here a little bit. Get the inner part of my thigh, the hamstring as well. Now we move over to the glutes. So we'll go ahead and take an angle on this. We can either, you know, just on this side, we're gonna get really where your leg stops and your butt starts. There's a there's a ball and socket joint there, so you can go straight. Again, take a 45 degree angle, kind of wrapping around the, the top part of your glute minimus and medius. So really you're going from where the, the, the joint is to where the joint is. The whole length of your butt, essentially where your hamstring ends, your butt, and then where your back begins. So at an angle down the middle, outer part of the hip, you're going to go ahead and prop yourself up on your elbow and roll the outer part of the hip. Again, you're going to find spots all over here that feel good. You might want to turn this way. You might want to turn that way. You want to stop. Oh, that feels really good. Allow that to loosen so those muscles will loosen up. So remember to explore as you're kind of walking through these different, different motions. Right from here, you can kind of extend that leg, turn a bit, and then get really into that hip. Because now that I'm not propped up here, the muscle's gonna take a different angle and kind of loosen up. So I'm gonna relax this leg and just go ahead through there. I'm gonna go through the other side of this leg a little faster just so you can see how the flow is. But getting that hip, now I'm gonna take my body weight on this leg, my weight's here. Also, I can move through the hip, but what I can do is I can pivot onto that hip flexor. So that's gonna be this area right here, right where your hip meets your thigh. So what I like to do, because what I call it is a seam, give it 
kind of the two things meeting, give it a minute and go over it very slowly. What you're doing is you're trying to kind of get it to loosen up. It does kind of take a while. And you might want to park on it right at the top of that, right here, right where the quadricep kind of ends. This area is usually pretty tight on almost anybody. So you might park it. But again, you're going to use your anatomy to go through the length on this leg from where my thigh meets my hip all the way to the top of my knee and back. So it's cylindrical. I might take an angle, I might go an angle here, go to the outer part. You can also do both legs. It feels good, but it's not quite as effective. So you might want to open up, also get that inner groin here. You can also do the inner groin another way. where mostly parallel to you, I'm going to take this leg and then my foot's down, I'm going to let it relax. Let those muscles open up again, relax. Again, do the length from your inner leg to your knee. Inner leg to your knee. So you're always going essentially from the joint to the joint. Doesn't mean you can't stay here and park on a really tight spot. Change the angle, get that top part. Again, it's cylindrical. Um, Lately, some people, some therapists have said you shouldn't be rolling your IT band, which is essentially your outer leg here. So for that, I would say this is where you're going to be responsible. Does it feel good? Is it hurting me? Because what the argument is, is that it's not the IT band, it's the other muscles around. If your program is comprehensive, if it's getting everything, you are not going to need to worry that it's everything around because you've tested everything. You've done your stretching which the video we're gonna have that's gonna follow this one. You've done your foam rolling and you know where you're tight. When I foam roll my thigh, I can feel it radiating into my knee. I know where it's good and where it's not. So really, you're the judge. Is it helping? After I did that thing that I was, wasn't sure about, how did I feel one day later, two days later? Was I really hurting? Did it feel a lot better? So you're gonna to have to base it on your own results. I mean, you're responsible. You are essentially your caregiver, your caregiver in that capacity. So I, I do foam roll my, my IT bands. I think it releases a lot of pressure from the knees. So for that, what I like to do, again, you're gonna prop yourself up on your anatomy, my shoulder here, and you can do a couple ways. I'm gonna use my hand, I'm gonna actually put it in this foam roller here to articulate it from, again, my knee to my hip. This is one way, and it feels good. But I can also manipulate my body, I can sit up, prop myself up on my hand, same thing. A lot of people do this way, which hurts. It hurts me just to do that. Why does it hurt? Because I'm flexing this as I'm trying to foam roll it. I'm resisting as I'm trying to soften it up and loosen it. So the idea is that you relax. You try to achieve the most relaxed position, especially for the muscle you're targeting by using your anatomy and trying to relax as much as possible around that, that body part you're targeting. This muscle is not really working, especially if I have it halfway bent, it's loose. Even if I, I stimulate the muscle, it'll bend a little bit. You know, it might move throughout the, the massage activity, but it's not locked out. It's loose, and that feels really good, and it's more effective. So one more time, I'll go through the motions very quickly just for you to get an idea of how the flow is. You're sitting, and you're foam rolling the feet. Even though I'm standing now, you're sitting. You go to the calf. Boom. You go behind the knee. You go to the hamstring, prop yourself up. Go to here. You're going to sit straight down your butt at an angle with your butt. Pivot to your hip, right in that hip. Pivot to your hip flexor. Use your anatomy to articulate all the way to the knee, all the way back to the hip. If you like the IT band, go ahead, bring that knee closer. Boom, right there. That feels good. I hope these moves and this foam rolling can help you resolve your knee issues and help you start looking for the reasons that may be causing it around the rest of your body, the cumulative causes. If you don't like what I did or you have questions about what I did or I didn't answer your question or you just want me to shut the F up, email me here with questions, comments. Don't forget to smash that bell and subscribe and make my wellness dojo your wellness dojo. Look out for that next series on diagnostic stretching and things everyone with a spine should know. I'm Ross, a.k.a. Drew Jackman. Have a good night.